In this video, we're using Fusion to make a customized comment pop-up box. Perfect if you wanna quote somebody in one of your videos, or if you wanna show a tweet or a comment from social media. We're gonna learn a ton of stuff. Let's dive in. So we have this animating out of nothing. We have the text popping in here. This nice little highlight going across. And you can sort of tweak this for whatever you wanna show on screen on one of your videos. We're gonna learn a lot of techniques here. This is like a motion graphics gold mine, just in this little bit. Let's do it. So I just have a new fusion composition and I've already dragged just a black background and connected it to my media out. I'm gonna go up to my workspace and just get rid of our page navigation here. So I'm working in the fusion page of DaVinci Resolve, but we're gonna stay in the fusion page so I'll I'll just get rid of those. All right, first thing, let's have a little bit more pretty background here. I'm gonna open my media pool and import a still. I just got this from Unsplash. If you don't know, that's a great place to get free stock pictures. And we're gonna take this and just add a lens blur. Lens blur, I believe, is only available in the studio version of Resolve. If you don't have the studio version, you can just use a regular blur and get a similar thing going on. But I just like the aesthetics of the lens blur. It looks more realistic as far as like a bokeh from a lens. So we'll do something like that. I also want to add a little bit of texture to this. And so I'll open up the media pool. Let's grab a texture. This is just kind of a gray paper texture, sort of like a scratchy piece of paper, but the colors are inverted. But you can use absolutely anything. I'll just merge this over, put a transform on here, and rotate this 90 degrees. Degrees. Maybe zoom it up a little bit. And let's take this merge and for our apply mode, let's set this to screen. Now it's gonna look like we're sort of looking through some dirty glass, which I kind of like that. And you don't really have to do this part for the comment pop-up. I just thought this looked nice. Maybe I'll take this blend down a touch, something like that. Keep it tasteful, baby. So now we have our background. I'm just gonna take this and just throw it all the way to the left. Everything else is gonna merge over this. Now, I think it's helpful when you're making something that's supposed to look like a interface to just use the interface as a reference. And so in my media pool, I have this screenshot I got. I'll just merge this over everything. And it's from somebody handsome that may or may not have commented on one of their own videos just so we could take a screenshot. So we have a little template going on, a little, little business template. And I think first thing I'll do is just crop this. Just shift space bar and type crop. I'll just bring down the X size here and make this sort of centered, something like that. And we'll just add another transform and kind of move this sort of towards the middle of the screen, something like that. Now, if this is the actual comment that you want to share, I mean, it's pretty simple. You could probably even do this in the edit page, right? You can just kind of show that. But we're gonna use this as sort of a guide to make our own customizable sort of template thing. So we're gonna replace most of this with things that are generated or at least editable inside of Fusion. The only thing that we're gonna keep are these little icons down here just because I don't wanna redraw those. And there's no real reason to unless we're gonna animate them, which I'm not going to right now, but we'll deal with those in a little bit. We're gonna kind of use this as our guide. I'll just hit shift space bar and type UND for underlay and then double click off of this, hold alt and click underlay, hit F2 to rename. We'll call this guide. So now we're actually gonna start building what we wanna do. And it doesn't really matter the order that you do this in, but let's start with the profile picture. Ideally, it would be great if we could take any profile picture and just kind of connect it to a series of nodes and then it just plops it in right there. So we're gonna build our own little template thing for this. And we're gonna start with a background node and we're gonna make it square. So I'll just hit F2 on the keyboard so we can just see our background node. Let's go over to image and uncheck auto resolution and we're just gonna make this maybe like 1080 by 1080. You could probably make it like 200 by 200, it doesn't matter, something square, okay? So we'll just call this square BG and we're gonna put our image over this. So let's grab a image. We should obviously probably use this guy <laughs> as the guy that leaves the comment and we'll just take this and merge it over that square background. And what that's gonna do is crop this to to a square. I'll take this media in and add a transform after that and we can size it down and it's just a little bit easier to crop something like this by just merging it over a background that's the right size than it is to actually use a crop node. It's just a little bit easier to kind of play around and move this and resize it and everything the way that you want. But you could also just crop it if you wanted to. By the way, if you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out my nine nodes workshop. There are literally hundreds of nodes in Fusion. It can get super confusing, but if you master just these nine nodes that I'll show you, you can make so much stuff in Fusion. You can get it for free right here. That's my gift to you. So now we have our guy formatted to square and we want to have him be within a little circle too. So we can do that just by using this ellipse and it'd be tempting to put the ellipse on my media in like this. And it sort of looks like it would work. But the problem is that when we switch that media in, if we want to ever switch this photo for something else, it's going to be sized weird because this photo is like 6K and it's this aspect ratio. And if we were to use a different photo, that ellipse would do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's better to put this ellipse right here on this 
merge like this. I'll hit two on the keyboard. And now we can reset this ellipse and just scale it up to be nearly at the edges. And that's always going to crop this image nicely to this circle that's perfectly centered within the square. So no matter what kind of photo we have, even if we have this paper, let's say, we put this in there, and as long as we scale it right, that's always going to have that circle. And we can move things within the circle without having any problems, because if this ellipse were masking this image right here and we were to transform it, it'd be just a lot harder. So let's not do it that way. Let's, let's be smart about it. Good idea. Okay, let's do that. We're just gonna plug our guy in here, make sure we have that sized appropriately. There's our man. And the last thing I'll do is take this square background and in the color here, we're gonna leave that at black and take the alpha down to zero. That's gonna make it so this is just a transparent square with that circle-y photo merged on top. So now all of this makes our little profile pic, okay? In fact, you could even select this and make it a macro. And if you ever wanna make something like a profile pic again, this is an easy way to do it. If you guys wanna learn more about doing that, let me know. That's something I've really started doing lately is making little macros to help with these, you know, three or four node little rigs. But we'll just select this, add an underlay, double click off, alt click, F2, and we'll call this profile pick like this and heck I'll give it a color teal yeah so now we have our profile picture and we could just merge this over everything like that and if we look at our media out we could grab a transform and size this and put this where it's supposed to go and you know what let's just do that put this right here have it roughly the size of the profile pick and just put that over that much more handsome there we go and now we've sized our element and we have a new element that we're switching out here for our profile pic. That works great. Let's do sort of the same thing with the text. I'm gonna take this guide and just turn the blend down a little bit, just so we have it just as a little ghosted image here and we can tell what our new elements are. This third icon over is a text plus. I'll grab text plus and just merge this over here like that. Actually, in fact, before I do that, I'm just gonna merge this on top of the transform like this. Then that'll keep these sort of grouped together, this new text that I'm adding and the profile picture. And if I wanna move them both at once. I could add a transform here or turn the whole group on and off with this merge. So let's just say uh, this was a lot of fun to make. Okay. I'm going to horizontally anchor this at the left, move this vaguely where it's supposed to be, turn down the size a lot, and let's turn this font to Arial, which is what a lot of websites use. Arial regular. And we'll turn this size down and we're just going to make this roughly the same size. Look at that. Just a, just a dead ringer just rocked it. Oh, so good. Nailed it. Okay. This was a lot of fun to make. So now we have that all set and let's rename this. I'll hit F2 and we'll call this uh, comment text. I'll copy it and paste this. Control C, Control V, merge this over here and let's move this up and let's write the name here. So let's say at John Jacobs. And instead of Arial regular, let's do Arial bold. And we'll make this just a little bit smaller. Try and put this right where that at sign is. Yeah, something like that. Now I think it's time that we actually make this panel. We can do that just with, surprisingly, a background node. And I think what we'll do, is just grab all of this and kind of move it up. Take this background, unhook our merge and merge our transform over that background. So now we have this black screen and we'll just mask this background here to be about the size that we want. Something along those lines. The one change I'm gonna make is just round these corners, just because I think things look nicer with rounded corners, you know? Maybe bring this down just a touch, something like that. Now we have this roughly sized where we want it. And the only thing left is to add the little like icons and things like that. Let's just go ahead and make a copy of this media N3 and we'll merge this over like this. I'll bring this up by itself in our second viewer and then just mask it directly because I know I'm not gonna ever move this under the mask. I'm just essentially cropping this. We'll kind of just select our icons here like that. Okay, great. I'll hit two on media out. Let's just take this background down for a second and we'll take this media in. Let's rename this icons underscore MI for media in. I'll add a transform, move this over to roughly where it's supposed to be, something like that. And now we can turn our background back up and look at that. We have a very nice looking little window coming up here. At this point, we could turn off our guide. So I'll just take this merge three and turn it off. And we have everything pretty much roughed in. I think I'll take this name and we'll align this to be lined up like that. That's just kind of a design thing. I'll also take this name and take a little liberty here and just kind of turn it down to gray maybe, just so it doesn't compete. We'll also notice that this gray right here and this black are different. So let's just take our background and color pick that and we'll make it the exact color of the YouTube dark theme. And there we have it. This is so cool. It's pretty simple. I mean, anybody can do this. It's just a matter of cropping our image, putting it where it's supposed to be, formatting our text and putting that where it's supposed to be. We just straight up stole these. And now we have this mocked up and 
if you don't want to do anything fancy, you can just leave it here, right? I mean, what's cool is now you can select this comment text and you can say some comment and you can make this person say whatever you want. You know, it can be just, I don't actually like cake. Wow, this is just a picture of my friend Sam now. Oh boy, that's uh, that's too bad. So we have a lot of control to be able to change these things just because we kind of regenerated things here in Fusion. Now, this is awesome, but it's gonna be even more fun if we animate it. So let's just turn off our media pools, give us a little bit of room here, make sure we're organized. Before I start animating, and you know, a couple times during when I'm making something, I like to just line things up real quick. Just makes everything feel nicer later. And now let's think about how we might animate this. Everything when it comes to motion graphics, it's it's more fun to not have it just appear, but you know, for it to animate on in some way. So for our profile picture, we can just have this kind of pop on. So let's just animate the size here. Just open up our spline panel. I'm gonna select this transform and we'll click the keyframe diamond for size. And then, yeah, at frame, I don't know, frame 12 or 15 or something. We can always move these around later. We'll set the end point and then we'll set the start point at zero, which is going to be zero size. So now that pops in like that, but I think I want this to overshoot it a little bit. So maybe at frame 10 or so, let's just zoom into our graph. I'll grab this and just push this up a little bit. And then and hit F on the keyboard to flatten this out. So now we have this kind of go whoosh like that and look what happens. It sort of overshoots and then settles and that's always a nice little thing especially when things are zooming in. So easy to do. And let's say right about that time that's when our text starts coming in. So this name, let's have this type on. Really easy way to do that is just animate this right on property. So I'll just click this keyframe diamond here and then yeah, a few frames later, click it again. I'll go to the start and then just take this end down whoop, like that. So now this just types on like that. We'll do a similar thing for our text, but we'll start it a little bit after this one starts. Just select this comment text, keyframe our right on, a few frames down, start it again, click this left button to go to the beginning and then turn the end all the way to the left. So now this is roughly animated like that. And we can adjust the timing and everything, but we're kind of getting the motion first, the things that actually happen. By the way, if your spline panel doesn't quite look like this, click on these three dots and make sure you have show only selected tool selected. You know why? Because if you don't, it's crazy. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I like to just have show only selected tool on, then we can just focus, just select the node that you want to adjust and there's its graph, right? So that pops up. That's nice. Let's have this whole thing appear a certain way. Why don't we just grab this rectangle mask that's defining our background and we'll just have this kind of start at nothing and then just widen out. Let's have it wide, I don't know, in 20 frames or so. And we'll just keyframe this width. Then I'll go to zero and then turn this all the way down. The reason I always start at the last keyframe is because I've already set things where I want them to end up and I don't want to have to re-guess how big to put something. So I just add a keyframe if I'm at zero already, but I add a keyframe at the end and then I go back to zero and adjust whatever I want to adjust. And that's how we can get this to animate in like that. We're going to do a similar thing for this width here that we did earlier. Just grab this and drag it up shift and hit F on these two keyframes. So now this widens out and then it kind of settles back down. I want it to settle down a little slower. So we'll just hold shift and drag this keyframe out a little bit. Maybe this is just a little far. So I'll take this down a touch. Yeah, that's nice. I actually want that a little faster now. So I'll take this and bring it this way. Yeah. Cool, but we have a problem. Our icons and everything are outside of our animation. We can fix that probably a few different ways, but the easiest way is just gonna be to just reuse this rectangle mask and plug this into our merge for our icons like this. And now it will limit it to that shape. It's so nice with nodes. You can just plug a node into multiple things, just mask multiple things without any problem. So easy. Okay, let's work on the timing of this. When you want to adjust the timing of things, keyframes panel is a good idea. This gives you like a little timeline of the animations and Again, I have a just show only selected tools on here because if it's not, then there's a lot of stuff here. Again, kind of overwhelming. And so I like show only selected tools and I'll just select the things I wanna look at. So the name and the comment, the transform for our picture and the rectangle mask. And now I can hit this zoom to fit button and I can twirl these down and I can see all the keyframes and all the animation and the timing of everything. So the first thing I want to happen is for this rectangle to come in. So that's a great thing to have happen first. Then let's grab our transform four, which is our profile picture. Then let's do the name right after that. Then let's do the text. Let's see how this looks. Yes. See, that's cool. Let's have this name come on a little bit faster. I can just select the layer itself and then that'll let me grab individual keyframes like this. If I have the property selected itself, I can't grab individual keyframes. I can only grab the whole thing. So that's kind of the trick there. So now we have the whole thing on in about two seconds and that looks really nice. Yeah. 
close our keyframes panel. Now let's just add a couple little fancy things. First thing is we could add a little drop shadow. We'll just hit shift space bar and type SH. That'll bring up shadow. I'll hit enter. You can make this soft and offset it a little bit and then just take this alpha down and then bring it back up to be tasteful. So here's without it and here's with the shadow. Very nice. And that shadow is going to generate from the transparency of our image and that's going to appear when our little box appears. The other thing I want to do is add a little shine to this. So before the shadow, let's just grab something like brightness contrast and we'll just push the gamma up a little bit since this is pretty dark. Gamma works. And then we'll just limit that with a rectangle mask. Just plug that in. Yeah, something like that. And I'll just turn this mask, make it a little bigger and then feather it a little bit, that soft edge. And now we can just sweep this across and now we have a little shine. So easy. We'll just start that shine at the beginning. Just keyframe this center and at the end we'll have this go all the way across. So now we have this and then the little shine goes across. Oh baby, this is looking so sweet. Love that. Let's give this whole thing just a touch more motion. Go back to our background here and just add another transform. And actually let's add this before our lens blur and our texture. And let's just move the center over for our background image. And we'll just keyframe this at zero. And then at the end, we'll just move it over just a touch. So we have just a little bit of parallax here. See, oh, that just makes it sing. That just makes it so nice. Look at this, this looks so classy. And Anybody can make this, so simple. As long as you know the basics on how nodes work, uh, you can follow along. This is just an example of the kind of things that you can make in Fusion. Just about anything that you can dream of, you can do it. If you're new here, my name's Casey and I teach editors how to make motion graphics and visual effects in Fusion. So make sure that you check out that nine nodes workshop right here. And also have a look at this video, it teaches you more Fusion stuff. So good. <laughs>